Hi, my name is Brad Magnus, and I have a quick tip for you today using Shapeshifter AE. Uh, recently, I purchased Particular, uh, the whole trap code suite, and I've enjoyed learning how to use it. And while on the Red Giant website, I ran across this Z Buffer uh, tutorial by Harry Frank, and it walks through how to use um, Particular with Video Copilot's element, and it just got me thinking how we should be able to do this in Shapeshifter. So, um, I kind of played around with a couple things, and I'll show you how to get the best result using Shapeshifter and Particular in this case. But the way that the, the any two 3D plugins work together, uh, th these principles will work across any of those plugins. So whether it's Shapeshifter and, um, you know, particles, just regular particles here in After Effects, or any other um, 3D plugin, uh, you can use the render mode of depth here in Shapeshifter AE to have a more unified 3D space. Okay. So let's get started. Uh, first of all, I have a camera, three lights, particular, set up with these streaklets, and the particle emitter is this light that is parented to this null. And um, again, this is very much a uh, inspired by this tutorial. If you'd like to learn how to set up the particles in that way, watch Harry Frank's tutorial. Um, I just want to run through how it is that the 3D space works. So instead of just copying his tutorial word for word, um, watch his, he's a great, great instructor. I just wanted to show you quickly how I do this with Shapeshifter. So um, so we have, uh, let me see here, we'll scrub through real quick. The camera swings around and the streaklet here should be spinning behind and in front of the uh, 3D text, as you can see here. However, we do not have it going before in front of and behind. Instead, we have it just going over top. So in order to fix that, we need to use inside of the particular layer, we can use a Z buffer layer. But we need to create that first. So we're going to take the, the text here, Z depth, which is pre-composed, um, you know, nothing fancy, it's just some text with a stroke on it, pre-composed, pretty much default settings here in Shapeshifter, and we're going to duplicate the layer. I'm going to again pre-compose this layer. Um, this is a very important step. If you don't pre-compose here, and you try to use uh, just a text, the, the, the pre-composed, before you pre-compose layer, which is a pre-comp, um, a particular will only see the pre-comp layer, won't see what Shapeshifter has done to that layer. So you have to pre-compose it and move all the attributes into the new comp, and we'll call this the pass, depth pass comp. Um, I could probably be a little better in that naming. Uh, okay, so that's start. You need to immediately copy this camera and drop it in here into this other comp here so that things match up. Um, I'm going to just go ahead and just leave the copied uh, camera in there. Harry Frank points out a really great idea of parenting the camera in this depth pass to uh, this camera using the pick whip. Um, definitely worth doing if you were going to be changing the camera. However, I know I'm not going to be, so I'm just going to come into the Shapeshifter layer and change the render quality from full render to depth. Um, so now we can kind of see uh, here that we have a lighter shade of gray in the back and a darker shade of gray in the front. Um, particular works with depth passes in the opposite way. So it wants the whiter colors to be closer to the foreground and the darker colors to be towards the background. So we're going to drop the invert, channel invert um, effect here onto our shapeshifter layer. And now we're in the, we're doing it 
the way Particular expects it to be done. So we'll come back to the main composite. And we have this in here, but we don't need to see it. So I'm just going to hide it and drop it down to the bottom of the stack. I'm going to grab the Particular layer, go to the Effects Controls panel here, and click uh, Z Buffer and change it to our Depth Pass Comp. And voila! No, 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 it's not voila. So there's quite a bit of tweaking that has to go on here, and it is just guesstimations. Um, I know that these far vanish and far start fade here are way high, so I'm going to turn them down quite a bit to something around, I think, 2,000 and 3,000 or somewhere where I had it last time when I ran through this. But this here, Z at black and Z at white are also very high values that you have to just kind of turn down until you get to where you see it start working together. And there was something. Um, let's see. Zoom in here. It's pretty close, and white will sneak that up just a little bit. And we'll take a look across the comp. And you see we have going behind here, and back in front, and it didn't quite go behind. So let's turn this down a little bit more. Right at 2000. Let's try that and do a quick run preview. Comes around behind and back in front. Ooh, looks pretty good. All right, so, so that again is just a quick tip showing you how to use the depth pass here to use that as a, as a, a Z buffer in particular. Um, and I hope that was helpful for you. You learned a couple quick things and I'll see you next time.